All right, man. We got we got too much to cover tonight because this all of this stuff going on with this Israel Palestine stuff and everything else is kind of like overshadowing everything else that's happening in the world. And there's a whole lot of other stuff happening. Uh, yeah. but clearly we gotta we gotta start with talking about this the stuff happening in Israel right now because it's it's absolutely insane. So um I know we we have so many things. It was like we had a whole show planned and then this happened. <laughs> <laughs> this Israel thing happened. And then it's like, oh, okay, well, let's put a lot of this on the shelf and uh, you know, talk about the most important thing happening in the whole world right now. And then we'll we'll kind of go from there. So uh, what do you think, man? You ready to just jump into it? Yeah, let's uh, dive into these waters, boy. Yeah. boy. <laughs> Going to be dicey tonight. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All right. Good day, everybody. You get the horn show, Tad and Jeff here. And uh, look, we're not going to waste a whole lot of time tonight with pleasantries, niceties, uh, and introductions and everything else. We got plenty to talk about. And let's just start with the, the top story globally right now. We talk all the time on the show. We have a global audience. Well, basically, this is the top story on planet Earth right now, which is this uh, conflict in Israel between, you know, it, Israel and Palestine, I don't even want to call it Palestine necessarily. It's Hamas. Um, Hamas has been registered as a terrorist organization for quite a long time now. Uh, and man, it has gotten crazy there very, very quickly. And it's just scary, man. So um, I don't know. Where do you want to pick up with this? Because the stuff that we've been seeing is just, uh, I, it, it's, it's some of the most insane things you'll, you'll ever see. It's shocking, yeah, to say the least. And and the first thing, man, <laughs> I'm already going to wade in this water. <laughs> uh, gosh, man. How did this happen? Israel has some of the most fortified protection. I mean, you, you, you heard the one uh, former Israeli soldier. She said, you, you wouldn't know if a cat brushed up against the fence like you would, they knew they had that. Like, how does this happen? I mean, they were like paratroopers coming in. You saw yeah. like that music festival, didn't even see it coming. How does it happen? Is it really, was it a, a surprise? Were they really just taking that off guard? It, uh, it begs a lot of questions, man. I, I don't know what your thought is. It's horrible. It's awful. It's, uh, I mean, you've seen some of these videos and they're just, it's 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 just it's barbaric what is happening um yeah i just i don't how did it happen how did this ha take place yeah so i think there's some interesting parts here i mean I, and i do think we need to separate the the conversation about what is happening and how crazy and horrible that is from the how did it happen right because yeah because there are tons of conspiracy theories going around and things like that right now. And again, are they wrong? Are they correct? I don't know. I mean, there's so many different things that, you know, going around that, that people have, you know, legitimate uh, questions about. And, and some of those have to do with how could this have occurred? Right. And so there's, there's what is occurring, which is just absolutely hard. I mean, this is, you know, if you, if you break down the word terrorism, right, it starts with terror and this is absolutely terrifying. What's, what's happening over there now, secondarily to that in a very distant second would be how, how exactly was Hamas able to pull this off? And I mean, look, let's assume for a moment that that we're going to look at them like the rest of the world seems to largely consider Hamas, which is a terrorist organization. You know, they plan stuff. They're not dummies. You know, like they find ways to, you know, to, to do things. It's hard to know. There's so much right now that we don't know about how long this has been being planned and 
who knows, did people get paid off to look the other way? I mean, you know, any number of different situations when you, when, when you involve border patrol, border security, et cetera, you know, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to take a guess. And it's, it's, um, you know, we're not, we don't want to be the ones that are putting ourselves in the middle of this to say any, anything about the logistics of how it happened are more important than what is happening. But if we talk about, you know, some of the ideas and theories, one of them is that did Israel allow some of this to happen in order to then have a reason to go after Hamas and crush them? And that's certainly a possibility. I mean, it would be not a, not a, not a dumb move by any stretch. It would be very, uh, you know, smart strategic move. I do think the flip side of that move is just because you're going to allow something to happen if it happens doesn't mean it was going to happen right then. So short of you reaching out and saying, Hey guys, if you ever wanted to try something, I'm happy to look the Let other way. Yeah. It's like, that's not exactly, you know, so, so I do think there has to be, even if you were willing to look the other way, that didn't mean that Hamas was going to attack. So there are some different things that would have to line up. And then, you know, there is the thing too, that, and it can't, it doesn't seem like it could only be a coincidence that, you know, the the Biden administration just freed up six billion dollars that had been frozen uh, for Hamas. So, oh, don't why? you love uh, don't you love community notes uh, on X? <laughs> it's like this is true. However, they can only be used on humanitarian aid. Like, Oh, well, yeah, they're just going to listen to us. Like, yeah. 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 Hey, here's my credit card. Uh, only <laughs> buy one bag of chips. <laughs> yeah. It's like, come on, man. I mean, you know, that's the whole problem is that. So if in fact the U S considers Hamas a terrorist organization, why would you free up? And again, I understand that the, the, there is a difference. We did not give them $6 billion. We had frozen $6 billion of their money that then we unfroze and released to them. Under, uh, what, under what circumstances would it make sense if you believe that they are a terrorist organization to fund them with $6 billion? I don't care if it's their money or not. Why would you unfreeze money that you had frozen from who you are personally calling a terrorist organization, it doesn't make any sense. Like just logistically, someone would have to really be able to explain to me why under any circumstances you would give, give back, free up, unfreeze. I don't care what adjective you want to use. Allow them to have $6 billion. I don't, I just don't, I can't comprehend that happening. Have you read or seen anything that can excuse that in any way? Because I haven't. No, I, that's no. I mean, I just, like I said, it's always the community footnotes that say, you know, this money you know, can't just be used any certain way. But if it's unfrozen, I mean, like, again, yeah. like it's like me it's telling. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's literally just like me telling my kids, like, hey, you can have access to the pantry uh, while we're gone, but only eat one cookie. Like, yeah. Well, just cause I say it, um, you know, it doesn't mean like it's going to happen that way. So it's just, uh, it's a very, very, uh, odd, terrible thing. And now, you know, we're, we're looking, you know, let's not forget like the other end of this, you know, it, it there are in Gaza, 50% yes. of the total population is under 15 years old. And right now, I mean, I, I you know, I, I don't know the whole ins and outs of where they're striking, but I can tell you that place looks like, a, a, a you know, just, a, it, it just looks apocalyptic. I yeah. mean, it, it's just. You're going to say it looks like a war zone. It is a war zone. <laughs> it's a war zone. Yeah. It's, and it is it's being just, heavily bombed yeah. by Israel. Yeah. Which just makes it even, uh, you know, <laughs> You know, it, it, you know, Hamas hides behind these kids and uses them essentially as, as human shields. Like there's like I, I, like I don't 
really care for the whole both sides of them, you know, like, oh, well, what about the other side? What about, you right. know, what there had to be swift action. There had to be, but I mean, man, <sighs> this is tough. There's no good in this. No. And, and, and at what price was this? Like, it just, Hamas could not be this dumb to think that we are outnumbered here. We are out, you know, we are out military here. Yeah. It just, it doesn't make sense to me. It just really does not make sense to me. You can take them off guard and you, you know, you kill a thousand, they're going to come back and, and strike you. And maybe that was the whole idea is we go here, we, we cause all this, this pain. And now, you know, we, you, Israel's going to strike and they're going to kill all these kids and everything because, you know, they're in the way of all this. And now it's going to be, look, look what Israel has done. You know, yeah. it, it, it's the only thing I can think that would make any sense as to why they would attempt this. Well, I mean, one thing's for sure, whether it was ever intended or not. I mean, you have definitely guaranteed that this conflict will stay around for another hundred years yeah. because now you have all these kids who have grown up already, maybe in not a great place in Gaza, then now are being, you know, completely bombed and destroyed by Israel and being told by their families, their friends and everybody else, you know, in, in Gaza about how, you know, Israel's the bad guy here. Yeah. And look, I, it's tough, right? I mean, th that's the problem is that there isn't a, a clear cut right and a clear cut wrong on how you handle a situation like this. Like right. Israel's going about it in a, in a, in an iron fisted way for sure, because they're looking at it like, no, no, we are going to solve this once and for all. We're going to wipe you off the face of the earth forever having attempted something like this. And the truth of the matter is, if you go back and look, there have been lots of these skirmishes over the last several years. Maybe not quite to this level, but lots of fights, lots of battles, lots of little things that last a week, a month, two months, whatever. And so, you know, the tensions have been there. And it's really interesting. You know, I was doing some research on this. So when, uh, when Trump was in office... He signed the Abraham Accords and the Abraham Accord was essentially between, you know, Israel and Palestine and, uh, and, and involved other Middle Eastern countries like Saudi Arabia and things like that. And this was the, the, the grandest, largest peace deal brokered in more than 50 years in that region. And then when you do more research into it, you find out that the Biden administration has really done nothing but freeze out both Saudi Arabia and Palestine since then, since they've moved in. The thinking being that they, and, and look, I'm not saying this as a pro-Trump, uh, anti-Biden thing whatsoever. I'm going to be super clear about that. But the thinking is, and this part I think does make sense, that they don't want Trump to get any credit for the Abraham Accords. So they've just essentially stiff armed, you know, Saudi Arabia, Palestine and everything else. And this supposed, you know, treaty, this peace treaty that was supposed to be there isn't really all that peaceful. It's just the U.S. backs Israel and everyone else is told to keep doing what they've been doing, which is get the short end of the stick. And so the tensions have risen where, look, doesn't matter, like him or hate him, and lots of people hate him. You can't argue with the fact that Trump did get everybody to the table that had not been done, did get them to agree to terms which had not been done, and did broker these agreements for peace that just had not been done. And so where you go from there is really important in the eyes of those nations because it's kind of like, okay, we're, we're willing, right? We're willing to, to kind of dip a toe in these waters. How do, how do we move forward? What does the treatment look like? And I, and I am, I'm separating Hamas from Palestine here, right? But Palestine has created Hamas and, and kind of appointed them as their, leadership, if you will. Right. And so 
you know, Palestine wants to be looked at as a sovereign nation and they aren't looked at like that. And I do think there is that part of this that maybe in the Abraham Accords, they felt like that was a step toward being seen as an actual nation and an equal. And then once they've realized that that hasn't been happening for them whatsoever, and if anything, things haven't gotten better and maybe have gotten worse, then it's kind of like, oh, well, okay, then we tried it their way. Now let's go and just try to do it this other way that we have seen work before, maybe not necessarily against Israel, but just in general, like we tried the peace way, let's try the war way and, and maybe make Israel look bad in everyone else's eyes to kind of level the playing field a little bit. Yeah. Now, the uh, problem is they have no control over Hamas. And so you have Hamas beheading children and all kinds of crazy things. And then yeah. it's kind of like, okay, man, you lost the moral high ground. The moment you have these types of atrocities happening, nobody's on your side at that point. Right. Yeah. I mean, th- yeah. And it, we don't know if any of that's true. Uh, I, I mean, we're being told that, you know, we're being told yeah. that by, you know, Israeli soldiers and everything, which, I, you know, I, <laughs> I hope they're making it up. I mean, right the level of evil you would have to to have to to do that to a a, a child and not just yeah. one child multiple children mm-hmm. um is uh is is truly truly evil um you know I, I think we always talk about this too though like follow the money where's the money you know where yep. who 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 wins um who wins in this war like who 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 profits from this and that's probably where you're going to find a good bit of your answers. Um, yeah. Well, it's not a surprise. I mean, defense sector stocks in the U S have surged. I think, um, gosh, I'm trying to remember, was it Northrop Grumman or someone else? Some, uh, big defense contractor, uh, slipping my mind right now, uh, was up like 7%. Uh, the day that this came out, like immediately, because it's like, Hey, let's face it. War is big business and good for business. And there are a lot of people out there that believe that that's why America is always in a war because the defense contractors, the, the manufacturing of, of, you know, uh, military equipment and weapons and everything else props up the economy. And at a time like this, where our economy is in rough shape, something propping it up uh, is, is awfully beneficial to the U S. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't either. I, I just, I wonder what the next steps are. You see um, the U S has brought in some of the big, the big Navy ships. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see, you know, what, what that, you know, I, are we going to get involved in this? Uh I mean, I guess technically maybe we already are to a certain extent. There's, you know, Americans that are supposedly hostage over yes. there. Yep. Um, so, you know, we may not have a choice. I don't know. I mean, it feels like we pick and choose who who we want to go after or who we want to, you know, release or who we want to try to to bring back. But, um, yeah, there's just the stories being told there. Um, you just you hope they're just make believe and, and they're just made up because some of the stuff is uh is wild. Uh, do you saw that picture of um, I don't know, Ferrari? Forgot her name. Lau, Lau uh, the she was like the model German um, citizen. I, um, I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, she was at the that rave, um, and then they showed yes. her body in the back of the truck. Yeah. Um, you know, legs look like they were broke. So I read just a little while ago that you know that her mother believes she may still be alive um, in, in, in a hospital um, somewhere over there. Um, said her credit card was used. I'm like, well, I doubt she's like charging anything up, but you know, I don't know, you know, maybe she had to get her credit card out to get treatment right. over there, but you know, and then some are pointing out like, Hey, this looks like a bullet hole in her head. You know, it's just, it's the speculation of all yeah. this stuff. And you, it's just like, you don't know. And it's also was like, okay, is the, what's this a distraction for? Is this a distraction for something bigger, something else going on? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you just, it, it, we live in this world now where you have to question absolutely everything. And maybe you always have. Uh, it's just if now it just feels like even more so like 
everything is just a diversion for something else. Yeah. It's just to get your mind off of this or that, you know, you, they pointed out someone um, uh, had said with Joe Biden's approval rating, no, no president had lower approval rating that didn't have a war started or something, you know, and then yeah. all of a sudden like this comes up and you're like, all right, you know, is that just coincidence? <laughs> I, I don't know. I was say Joe Biden started to started a war, um, but yeah. you know, that was something that was brought up. Someone mm-hmm. mentioned it. And then, you know, here we are a year later or whatever. And now we have this going on and, you know, this is all coming due. Election time is coming up yeah. next year. You know, we're re- ready to roll into 2024 and the next couple of months. Um, and now all of the stuff is starting to really just pop up. You know, now Zelensky's concerned that the focus is going to be taken away from, you know, Ukraine and, and the forces are going to leave there. And, you know, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the other thing, too, that I, I read um, just the other day is that the Biden administration is considering a one and done package for Ukraine, one additional kind of group of funds to be sent to Ukraine, $100 billion. But then with the insurance, that's, that's it. We're not going to give them any more. That's, that's, you know, so it's almost double what we've already given them. But then it would be a one and done. We don't have to ask anymore. Man, I can't. I, I just, I, 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 my spidey senses are telling me that uh, there might be financial aid coming to Israel pretty soon, and it might somehow, even though it wouldn't need to be in any way, shape, or form, but somehow there might be some money in there for Ukraine as well. Because that has been a great concern, you mentioned for uh, Zelensky, but also for the Biden administration, that support for funding Ukraine has really dropped off. We know that they tucked money for Ukraine into the Maui aid bill to be able to get that across. So this is, this is something that we've already seen. This is a page out of the playbook, which is, Oh, okay. Well, you know, here's, here's this issue. Here's this problem. We need to send aid, but we also need to send aid over here. And you know, the other thing that's scary though, if you are, if you want to see anything good for America, these are scary times because America is getting pulled into the battle with Ukraine and Russia. They're now getting pulled into Israel and Palestine. How long is it going to be before, you know, Taiwan becomes an issue with China? Because we that's been simmering for years now. Russia and China are talking about teaming up. And Biden came out, what was it, last year and said that uh, the U.S. military was dangerously low on munitions. Publicly. Publicly told that to the world. And so what happens? You start drawing us into all these battles overseas. And as you mentioned, what, you know, at what cost we don't have the money. So what do we have to do? We have to print more. Well, what is that going to do? It's going to further devalue the dollar. (laughs) Well, what's that going to do? It's going to increase inflation. Well, what's that going to do? It's going to make it impossible for people to buy anything because rates are going to continue to go up. And, uh, and so, you know, all of these things, whether they're intentional or not, that's a conversation for other people to have. We're not the ones to sit here and tell you what is or isn't. We're the ones to have you ask the questions and give you the information to say, does this make sense to you? And when you look at this stuff, there is coincidence in life, uh, but there's only so much. There's, (laughs) There's not a limitless amount of coincidence. And what we have going on right now, it's beneficial to too many people to just think that all of these things are happening coincidentally. Uh, it, yes, it's, uh, you'd have to really, yeah, you know, it. <laughs> you, you just almost have to have like more faith than, I, I don't even know, you almost Sense. delusional to, <laughs> to, to, yeah, <laughs> to think that like, yeah, this is all just random. This is random. I mean, I, yeah. I think we just gotten to the point now where I think most of us know there's as Paul Harvey used to say, more to the story, right? Yeah. I, I, there's just always more to this. So oh, this is, uh, yeah, it's scary times. And of course now, you know, our oil, um, you know, our, 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 you know, needs 
because uh, mm-hmm. we just opened up. You know, we just used some of the reserve because he was trying to lower gas prices down. Now our reserve is low. Now it's going to be hard. You know, so now we're going to see gas prices go up. You know, we're going to see all this stuff now start to go back up again. And yep. start this way. And like the strategic <laughs> petroleum reserves are at the lowest point yeah. that they've been in history since we started having strategic petroleum reserves. And, and again, it's all for artificial reasons. It's oh, gas prices are up. Okay. Well then let me, let me bring gas prices down. Gas prices didn't need to be artificially brought down because that's a very temporary fix. Right? So instead yeah. we now don't have, we're not in a position of strength. And if we want to refill the oil reserves, well, guess what? Gas is two or three times as much as it was at the time that that we initially you know had it so we released it when gas was cheap we have to buy it back when gas is expensive and the only thing that would make sense is if gas prices are high and our petroleum reserves are really low i don't know is there do we know anyone in the middle east that maybe (laughs) we could work out a deal with that could either help us in like ukraine or or Israel and Saudi Arabia that maybe could help us get our hands on, on some oil in some better way than than what we're able to do. Like, come on, man, this is too, like, I'm not saying I understand all the moves because I don't, but you have to be able to see the moves are being made. Like you may not understand all of them, but you got to see that they're being made. This stuff doesn't happen. Coincidentally, it doesn't happen. Like battles have been going on in, I don't know, Africa, right? Forever. When does the U.S. intercede? Very, very rarely. And if we did, it would be on an incredibly small scale. Yep. And so I think this is kind of like, hey, Israel, if you want to solve this problem, we're going to step back and we're going to let you solve this problem. And if you need help from us, well, gosh, I mean, we've pledged our loyalty to Israel time and time and time again. So sooner or later, you might have to write a check and, you know, we're in that position. It's just going to come with some strings attached. And, you know, I don't know what those strings all are, but I do know this. In the days, the day of and and days after the Biden administration, let me just say Joe Biden did not speak to the media at all. They had a barbecue at the White House with live music and everything. And he would not speak to the media. It was a non-partisan barbecue though. So we'll give him credit for that. That's right. (laughs) But seriously, how do you have a president when something like this is going on? I mean, the least you could do is when you're walking to air force one or something like that, or Marine one, the helicopter, at least stop for 20 seconds and condemn what's happening. You don't say anything. You don't say a word. And so we're supposed to be these staunch allies of Israel. And I'm not saying we shouldn't be, I, you know, whatever. But we are, but yet we're not going to speak out about any of this. Why would we not speak out about it? It's almost suspicious when you don't, right? It's like it's almost more suspicious for you to not say anything when this is the biggest story in the world. You don't want to acknowledge it. That's, that's bizarre behavior. I don't understand exactly the motivations, but it's bizarre behavior. Oh, to say the least, as as Americans are being taken hostage, you know, yes. you're you're eating a pulled pork sandwich, you yeah. know, <laughs> watching fireworks. It's yeah, it, it, the optics, if nothing else, are terrible. I don't yep. know how anyone defends it. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, do you cancel the barbecue? I don't know. Yeah, probably right. <laughs> like, it's a barbecue. I'm pretty sure you know you can find someone to cater at another time like well, well at we least got say all we're di- going to use this barbecue to unilaterally discuss this situation something. and try to come up with right. some strategic moves in the region or so- something right like, I don't, yeah put it's on a just, show at least pretend yeah yeah it's just it's the optics if nothing else are just awful horrible like i, I but they have to see that too like that's the thing like Like as much as, you know, people want to say like, oh, Joe Biden is, you know, robot and he's this and that, you know, can't form coherent sentences. Like he's not stupid. Right. The administration isn't stupid. Whoever's pulling the strings aren't stupid. Like you cannot be this blind to this. Like it, it, they have to know what the optics look like. So it's just another one of those 
what what were they trying to convey here? Uh, it just it doesn't it it just doesn't make any sense. Like, yeah, what, you know, we're going to go about our business. You know, we don't care what's going on in other parts of the world. You know, and if our 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 people are over there, then you know, so be it. They shouldn't have been there. I, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Like I just I don't know because they you know we say you know how bad the optics look and and he gets killed for it, but they aren't dumb like the, the White House cannot be yeah. this incompetent. They look yeah. this incompetent sometimes, but they can't be. They right. can't be this incompetent that they would think this would still be a good look. I I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know who defends it. I don't know how you defend it. It's just, it's just so odd. You got fireworks going off and, and meanwhile, yeah. like supposed children might be getting beheaded and yeah. you're. Yeah. <sighs> no. And, and the other thing too is, look, I think we're to a point where it's seeming in my mind, at least less and less likely that Biden will be the candidate for the upcoming election for the, for the Democrats. Um, I just don't even see that. I just don't, I just don't think it's going to happen. So, you know, the theory that I've heard floated around is that it's going to be Gavin Newsom, uh, governor of California. And, um, and look, let's, let's face it. Right. I mean, yeah, he could, if, 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 if they decide it's him, I mean, you know, he's, it's the biggest state. He's probably, you know, he could probably get there. So is, is, is some of this stuff being done specifically to undermine Biden to create this scenario for him to step aside or to create the, a, 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 a greater groundswell of support to have someone else step in because they recognize, and I don't know who the Republican candidate's going to be, right? Maybe it's Trump. Maybe it's uh, Vivek Ramaswamy. Maybe it's Robert Kennedy Jr. There's any number of different people. But regardless of who it is, they have to feel like the options on the Republican side will start to look pretty appealing if it's compared to Joe Biden, right? Like it just has to. And and so I just feel like, okay, is there anything there that maybe, you know, the idea is to, to – maybe not completely undermine Biden, but at least kind of make him seem like a day late and a dollar short on some of these decisions to kind of create a little bit more demand. Again, who who are those handlers? Who's doing it? I don't know. But is he just going along with it? Like, well, all right. Yeah. Make me look like the weakest president in U S history. I, I just can't imagine he'd be, I, I can see him he knows maybe, enough to not go along with it. Yeah. I mean that, and then, then you're really saying like, we think this guy has, you know, his, his mental faculty, uh, faculty, I can't even say it. His <laughs> mental capacity <laughs> it, it has diminished that much that he can't, you know, uh, that he's just okay with it. I mean, you know, you see these pits, these bits and clips of like him, you know, just going in this incoherent rants, but then yeah. you see other ones where, He's perfectly fine. So I, I don't know, man. I, I I would think if there is like something there mentally that like the guy just can't do this job, like they would step in and do this. Like uh, maybe that's just me giving too much credit to the people in, you know, in power. Um, You know, I I just wonder how much um, Robert Kennedy coming out today and saying he's going to be um, going as an independent candidate, which I think really he, that really is going to mess a ton of stuff up. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I've heard that this was essentially that, that like that he will run as an independent um, up until he can see who is going to be, you know, who's going to be in the lead and then right. he can drop out, um, which will help get Trump reelected. Like, is Trump even going to be in a position to be, you know, elected as president again? I, I, I don't know. It, yeah. it, it, <laughs> Man, I'm exhausted already, and we haven't even really <laughs> begun this whole charade uh, coming up here in the next, you know, 10 months, uh, yeah. uh, you know, what, 11 months coming up here that we're going to have to be dealing with this stuff. So I, I don't know. I mean, I just haven't like Robert Kennedy Robin, running as an independent. Like he has to know 
I mean, unless he's going to become the first independent ever to win an election, the the you know the the most recent one that comes to mind that was actually able to put together any type of, um, yeah. you know, any type of run was Ross Perot, and like he got like what three percent of the vote, yeah, <laughs> like something yeah, just exactly. stupid enough yeah. to throw off the election, of course. But surely that's not Robert Kennedy's thought process going into this like he 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 can't be thinking like oh i'm just gonna run interference for the republican party uh, can he yeah, I don't I, get it. it doesn't does he really think he can win as an independent maybe we've have we gotten to that point i, I don't i don't think we've gotten to that point considering we can see that mitch mcconnell has keeps getting reelected nancy pelosi keeps getting reelected diane feinstein's probably going to win again <laughs> Like, I don't think we've gotten to the point where where we can think that this country is going to run as independent. We've seen a lot of crazy things happen um, recently um, that maybe is starting to shape up with that. You know, like, you know, you, you've got speakers being ousted and, you know, mm -hmm. I think we'll probably, we probably might go into it a little bit here. But have we gotten to the point where we really think like an independent such as Robert Kennedy could could win like i'm intrigued by him i, I don't know that i could yeah. vote for him but i'm i'm very intrigued by what he has to say that is for sure yep but i'm you know i'm probably one of those people that um you know they again we you know i don't vote party lines like i, I right. that's just not my my style yeah but i don't think i'm in the majority with that at this stage um but Maybe. No, but look, I, I do think there's a very realistic possibility that this is a shot across the bow from Kennedy to the Democrats to say, hey, look, like, it, it, because look, they haven't included him in the debates. Like he, he, he can't get on like ballots or anything anywhere. He's not getting, you know, the attention that he arguably should be from Democrats. I mean, honestly, I don't understand if you are the Democratic Party, what exactly don't you like about Robert? I mean, the guy is a literal Kennedy. He looks like the Kennedys. He is Robert F. Kennedy Jr. This is one of your like poster children of the Democratic Party, Robert Kennedy, him and John Kennedy, old Bobby Kennedy. This is his this is old Bobby Kennedy's son. He looks just like him. Looks like he like came right out of Camelot, and then here he is coming out here to run like from the sidelines. This 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 grand historic American great family. He's coming in to kind of be the savior. The prodigal son returns, comes into politics, and then gets ignored by the Democratic Party for for what reason? I just don't understand. Because why wouldn't you like him better than Gavin Newsom? And notice yeah. nobody ever suggests that Kamala Harris is going to run for president. That isn't even a thought. That is, now she's the vice president, and you never, ever, ever hear Kamala Harris's name as even a possibility nope. for president. It's Joe Biden. It's Gavin Newsom. Or otherwise, they just don't know what the heck is going to is going to happen. Meanwhile, you have Kamala Harris there. Nobody seems to want her to be a part of it. So why wouldn't Robert F. Kennedy Jr. be the guy that you would plug right in and say, he's our guy and throw the full weight of the democratic party behind him. He's a guy that's moderate enough that Republicans could, could kind of live with the idea of him taking over because I promise you, even Democrats are going to have a hard time with Gavin Newsom. Most of the country does not want the, the, the same guy who's been governing California as it's gone into this death spiral to then be running the country. So I just feel like RFK Jr. is a guy who people can get behind, deal with. Republicans maybe aren't going to love him just because he's a Democrat. But outside of that, he's not that dissimilar from lots of Republican views. And then you just kind of look at it and you go, okay, well, th that's so easy. Why do you want to polarize it so much that you're going to go all the way to, to a Gavin Newsom if it's not Biden? I just I don't understand strategically why you would go that route. Yeah, that, that's the thing. And I, I, they have to know. I mean, is Gavin Newsom liked? I don't know. I can't imagine this guy is liked. I mean, there's yeah. so much about this guy that just screams elitist. I mean, you just look at the whole, you know, 
the whole COVID lockdown and, and he's at the French laundry having, <laughs> you know, dinner while no businesses, masks, no, nothing. no mask, nothing like it just, it screams, you know, elitist, you know, you have, you know, we, we talk about it. I feel like every episode, you know, you've got the federal building who can't, they can't right. go to work. This is in his state. You know, yes. it's not like, you know, it's not like he's just, you know, mayor of a town. He's governor of the whole entire state and you got federal workers who can't go to work. So it's, it's an odd choice. I, and I don't understand it. And, and I just, I don't know if it's a situation where maybe Biden's camp is just not relenting and like, no, we're going to run again. Like I, I don't, or Kennedy saying, I'm not going to follow your game plan. I, right. I, I don't, yeah. You know, there's just some, some, disconnect going on in the democratic party right now. I mean, we think the Republican party is bad. Maybe it's just as worse. Like there's just too many people that want different things. And yeah. Kennedy says, I'm not going to be, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not going to, this is not what I'm going to do. I, I, I'm going to run, but I'm not going to run based on, you know, your platform and what you guys want. I don't know. I mean, you would think just to be president, you would be like, yeah, I'll do whatever. So <laughs> I, I don't, you know, yeah. I think that Robert Kennedy has like these, like just great morals and ethics. Like, eh, I don't necessarily believe that. How do we know? But, <laughs> but right. Like, I, I don't necessarily believe that. So I, I don't, I mean, I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I just, I, I you know, he's a career politician as well. So it's not like I can think that like, he's got some, you know, just, you know, amazing ethics and, you know, I'm not going to follow it. Like, it's going to be president. You know, if Democrats want you to be run for president under their ticket, you would think you would do whatever he wants. So yeah, it's, it doesn't make sense why they don't want him unless he really is. And not just like, I'm not going with your game plan. Like this is, this is how I think the country should be run. So I don't know. And maybe they just don't want the Kennedys having any more power than what they already have. That could be the other thing too. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess that's possible because, you know, the one thing I um, I will uh, just – I don't want to say correct, but adjust to something that you said because Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is not a career politician. Uh, he hasn't been in, in politics. I, I think you said that he was. I just want to be clear that, like, that that's not his background. And so now you you he's probably more of a wild card because he hasn't been – a career politician and maybe that's part of it that he's not entrenched in the system in the same way like i just don't understand if i'm a, if i'm the democratic party is he just a guy you can't control you know like he's been an attorney um so you know there's there's no doubt about that but i i just don't understand like where you know where where you're gonna find a better candidate and I'm not saying that Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is the perfect candidate by any stretch. But man, if I'm the Democrats, I feel like I'm hemorrhaging right now. And he feels like a guy that's going to be a much better fit for you. Um, I just, I, I, I'm at a loss on it. I mean, the guy's a, he's been a, an environmental activist. He's been an attorney. Like there's enough things there that you feel like you'd be able to get behind pretty well on an RFK Jr., I don't know why you can't. Um, but then, you know, you flip that to the Republican side. And I feel like in, in a very weird way, Republicans are going to have choices that they're going to feel pretty good about. You know, I do feel like in general, okay, maybe Trump, maybe not Trump. Who knows about that? But outside of Trump, you still have Vivek Ramaswamy, who is very interesting. Um, and you know, and so you look at that and you go, okay, yeah, there's, there, there's some options there that don't have to be Trump. And, and I, I even think that, I mean, look, I think there's such an opportunity for, if anyone was smart and don't worry, no one is, but if anyone was, there's such an opportunity for a split ticket, why not have, you know, and, and I, th this is not like me pushing for this. I'm just, this is an example. Why not have an RFK Jr. as president with a uh, Vivek Ramaswamy as VP? Like, why couldn't you do that? Because I guarantee you, their views are probably not that far from each other. Right. I mean, the fact that RFK Jr. is even willing to run as an independent shows that he 
is not in lockstep with the Democratic Party, or if he is, they're not in lockstep with him and he knows it. And so, you know, it, it's kind of like, you know, is this the opportunity to kind of start to migrate a little bit? Um, you know, and I just, I don't know the answer. I, I definitely don't know the answer to it. But I mean, if you look at what Kennedy has done, uh, you know, there's, I just feel like there are, there are things to like, you know, so it, from that perspective, I think it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty good. Yeah. No, I mean, so maybe he's not a career politician, but it, <laughs> I mean, to think that he hasn't had a foothold or, or, or you know, oh, say sure. in, in this stuff, um, you know, I mean, yeah, he, he started out, I mean, let's remember, you know, he was, you know, sister district attorney, and then, you know, he uh, got into some uh, some issues and and things like that. Will you know, which I'm sure would be brought up, you know, his yeah. heroin to use his, and, and different things like that. So, but to think like a Kennedy doesn't have any political sway or power <laughs> is, you know, yeah. so yeah, I guess career politician. I mean, but he's always been, you know, uh, you know. I don't even know lobby is the right word. I mean, you know, he, he wields a lot of power. He's a Kennedy. So yeah, hundred uh, percent. It just, it, why he wouldn't, I, I, that's the only thing I, I just think the Democrats, just the fact that he would be, they just don't want Kennedy's to have any additional power than what they have. It, it could be, could be the reason. Otherwise you're right. I mean, it would be smart to have like a, a ticket. Like I just, I don't, I don't know that that's what we want. I don't think, this country, we want unity. So, yeah. uh, you know, could you, I mean, imagine that ticket of, uh, I, I don't even know. I mean, you know, Vivek is a weird candidate to me. I mean, I've heard some of his stuff and, and it's a lot of it even feels a little Joe Biden-ish plagiarized. You know, you're looking at like what Obama said and you, you read, you know, then you hear something, you know, a speech that Vivek gives and it's, you know, there's a lot of similarities there. And, right. And he also feels like a kind of an Obama type of thing, like just comes out of nowhere. And then, you know, you saw like the old videos um, of him surfacing, you know, when he's like a teenager and there he is with um, Pete Buttigieg and, and they just happen to be at the same place. They both just yeah. happen to be, you know, asking questions. It's, so I, I don't know. It, it, he, he feels kind of a, a plantish to me. I, I, it's just, that's a weird situation um, there too. So I, I don't know, really know what to to feel about him either. It's just like another one of those, like, where did this guy come from? Like right. nobody heard of Vivek a, until, I mean, I won't say nobody, but your general sure. public has not heard of this guy until six months, uh, maybe a year ago. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. Like, and again, I used him as an example, right? Cause I mean, it could be a Nikki Haley as a, as a yeah. VP. I mean, if you wanted to have, RFK Jr. as president and Nikki Haley or somebody like that as VP. I mean, I just think that there, there are options that don't have to be this hard party line because who on the Democrat side would you want for both president and vice president? You can't find one. Now you got to find two. Yeah. And on the Republican side, okay, let's assume that, that Trump's out of it, right? Remove him. He's and I say that because he's clearly not going to be vice president, <laughs> so he's either going to be president or not. Or not. Uh, and then separately from him, it's like, can you find two on the Republican side? You know, I think it depends on what your politics are, on whether or not you can. V Vivek is a possibility. Nikki Haley's a possibility. But if you if you only had to find one good one from each side one good Democrat, one good Republican and have a split ticket like that, man. I mean, it's just like, it'll never happen. It'll never happen because it we talked about it. Could. could it happen? Could it happen on an independent side of it? What if Robert yeah. Kennedy goes to, I, I, I don't, DeSantis is probably a, a bad choice, but let's just say around Ron DeSantis. Sure. I mean, I, I, there's that, that guy look like the, sh the, pure front runner for yeah. the longest time. And then now it's just weird. Now they're talking about like, does he have like lifts in his boots? Did you see that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so weird. But then well, you look and... at the boot he's wearing. It's like, where's his foot at? <laughs> it's just so weird. And then that, that smile, I was like, yes, 
Yeah. It was just so weird. No, the more and, like, he's popped nobody... and got out there, yeah. the worse it went. And he's done an amazing job in Florida. Like, remember that hurricane? Like, he got that bridge built in like three days. I mean, it was yeah. just like, you know, he, he he seems like like he was good, but just like you get him on the national stage and it was like, ooh. Yeah. You know? But it, but it's just, it, you know, Republicans got to figure something out because yeah. if it's not going to be Trump, then who who was who is it going to be? Because yeah. the candidates are not looking that great. I mean, if you're no, a Republican, a you field. have to be you have to be concerned because I know there's plenty of Republicans that do not want Trump to be That's president right. of the second term. Um, but if not Trump, who? So, I mean, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> could you, could, I, I, and I don't know if it's possible, could someone like Robert Kennedy switch and become a Republican candidate? I, I don't know, but that's I where maybe, that. yeah. So, but that's where maybe he could get the Republican votes by asking one of these presidential mm -hmm. Republican candidates, come alongside me, be my vice president you could probably get a lot of people on both sides to, to, to agree. Be a hell of a ticket. This might be good. This could be good. And it's easy enough to point and say, everything's broken. Everything is broken in the world. So let's not worry about Democrat, Republican. Let's just go down the middle and get two of the best people, independence and go. And, you know, I think Democrats can't be happy with how things have gone. Um, as you said, there's a lot of Republicans that don't want Trump. The only reason some of them want Trump is because he's the only chance they have at winning and yes. Republicans want to win just like Democrats want to win. Sure. It's the same reason that, you know, the, the current administration wants to make sure that Trump never gets any credit for anything under any circumstances because they don't want to strengthen his position. So it becomes more important to unravel progress that was made to avoid him getting credit for anything than it is just to say, no, this is good. It doesn't matter how we got here or who did it. We just need to focus on the, on the wins. No, it's, it's like, no, we need to unravel all of those wins because otherwise yeah. there are things that he can point to as having accomplished and nobody wants that. So sure, you already saw what he said, what happened um, in, in Israel, like yep. he's our, and what he said has happened. So it's, yeah. you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know that I would want another four years uh, of this, but I, I don't, I, I, this is, like I said, man, we're, we're in for a, a long summer here. <laughs> I mean, this is, and I don't know when, how it gets figured out and how it gets decided. I mean, it, it's, it, it's going to be one of those things that's just really going to come down to, down to the wire. Like I, I who's going to be the Republican candidate, who's going to be the democratic candidate, and yeah. then what is Robert F. Kennedy going to take away from either either side? Your best bet is to try and get this guy on your side. I mean, I, I think anyways, even if he's not the president, what if he is the vice president nominee? You know what? Right. What, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, this is um, this is going to be uh, like I said, we're in for a long, long year. That's for sure. Well, and the other thing, too, is that we know for a fact that no matter what. It's going to be a very tight election when it happens because all elections now have to be incredibly tight and, sure. and you know, very, very combative and, you know, and, and, and protested down to the last minute and everything else. So if I am a, a Biden or anyone else, I have to look at this Kennedy situation. And in my mind, it's like I'd rather bring him in to the fold 100%. than push him out. Because if that guy got even 5%, 10% of the vote, well, there's your election right there. There's your mean, election. 1%, like one, less than one half of 1% was like the difference in the last one. So a 5 or 10% swing is just done. You're dead in the water. That's exactly right. And so there's and only two things that that's what most people do. think. That's what most people think he is running based on, is yeah. to give the win to anyone but the Democrat side. Because yeah. he knows he can't get the full backing of of all the democrats he's going to take away that five percent and it's going to be a landslide victory for the republican party yeah. that's how i envision it that's how a lot of people see it i could be completely wrong but that's that's what i i i think 
Well, and the other thing that's interesting too is that, you know, Kennedy speaks out often about government uh, waste, government corruption, you know, all of these types of things. That doesn't make you popular with the current government, <laughs> right? Like, right. it's just like you can't go out and say those things constantly and then, you know, think that, the, you know, the current people are like, man, it seems like a good dude. Let's bring him in. Yeah, you're but, right. <laughs> But you got to like, you, you got to figure out a way to, to take advantage of what he has and what he can do. Because if you don't, then it's going to cause you far greater problems. And yeah. I, I think that like, yeah, he, you know, he's in a position now where weirdly he has a lot of power because even if he can't win as a Democrat, he can make sure no other Democrats win. That's exactly. It. And he can easily like, I don't think it would be a big swing for him to go to the Republican side. I don't think so either. No. And I think if he timed it perfectly, I think there's an awful lot of people that would vote for him on the Republican side because they wouldn't have to vote for Trump, but he has said a lot of things that people agree with. And, and let's face it, even even more fringe things, because he has spoken out of, uh, against vaccines and different things like that as well. That are some more fringe arguments, but more of those fringe argument people are on the Republican side most of the time, many of them being Trump supporters. So it's kind of like a, hey, uh, this is this is like a Trump light, right? There's still lots of things that I like and agree with, Um but it's a little bit more of a palatable, you know, package. Uh, and, you know, so I, I don't know, man. I, if, if, if To me, RFK Jr. is the X factor on all of this stuff. And, and again, you know, he has the Democratic side in terms of, you know, he's been an environmental lobbyist and he's done huge amounts for the environment. That's not typically a Republican strength. That's a Democratic strength. But he has all of that. But then he has the you know, the, the government corruption and, you know, all of these types of things as a more conservative type of Republican, you know, would feel. And then pretty strong arm policies, particularly as it, as it pertains to, you know, overseas, the Middle East and those types of things that people would look at right now and go, well, damn, I kind of wish somebody in there had a, you know, had, had a strong way to, to govern this and manage it. So there's just a lot to like there. I, I don't know. I don't, well, first of all, I don't know that I'm going to vote for him and I don't know where it's going to end up, but just strategically, as you're seeing the pieces come into place, I think there could be a late opportunity. I don't know when, six months before the election, something like that, where a RFK junior could swing over to being a Republican and it would cause a crazy surge in the polls and a total swing because now you have a good number of Democrats. It's late in the race and they find out it's Biden or Gavin Newsom. Or I can vote for this guy who I maybe was already going to vote for because he's, he's a Kennedy and I'm a Democrat. Now I still get to vote for him. Okay, yeah, I have to tell my friends I voted Republican. But regardless, like, you know, I can still get the guy. Yeah. And is he secretly a Democrat? Like, I, I right. don't know. it's always weird right. when these people switch over, switch parties. It's like, yeah. Okay. What did your beliefs just change? Or do you just think you have a better chance of winning? Like, are, are you all one and the same? It's just, that's a very yeah. uh, weird thing. And especially for the people that vote for him, they're like, wait right. a second. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You just switched parties, you know? So, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting see. stuff, you know. I mean, yeah. I, I just think in general, though, you know, nothing's playing out well. Nobody can claim a victory here, you know, uh, yeah. in anything that's happening, whether it be foreign or domestic, right? I mean, the economy sucks. Inflation's horrible. Gas prices are only going to continue to escalate. You know, gas prices are like $7 a gallon still in California. Yeah. They're over five fifty a gallon in Nevada. I mean... You know, you see a lot of places on the East Coast and it's three fifty to four dollars a gallon and people are kind of okay with that. But they're not okay with it in these places like a California where it's six and seven dollars a gallon or almost six dollars a gallon in Nevada. Those that, that, that's impactful, man. And if prices go up more the way that they're expected to, and it ends up being, you know, four or five dollars a gallon on the East Coast and eight or ten dollars a gallon on the West Coast. 
trust me, that's going to have an impact as well. That's going to have yes. an impact on people's voting decisions and everything else. Sure. And no matter how many times uh, Joe Biden's uh, handlers on X tell you how great everyone is doing, like it's one of those things where like, no, like, come on, dude. Like you can't possibly just because you say it doesn't make it true. Like <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just went to the grocery store uh, on Friday. Yeah, no, no, we're not doing better. We're not doing better than we were. There's not a point in time since you've been in office that anyone has been doing better outside of you sending all those stimulus checks out to everybody, which now we're paying for because right. you know, we've printed way too much money. So outside of that, no, no, things haven't, haven't been better. Uh, everything is up. I don't know if, did you see the uh, video? Uh, I know we're running along, but did you see the video of the guy who went into, I want to say it was Costco, Trader Joe's, it was, or one of those places. It was one of the big box things. It was either Costco or what's, I don't know what the other one is. Uh, Sam's uh, Club. BJ's or Sam's Club or yeah. something. I don't know if, did you see him go in there and uh, have videos of like what stuff cost like now compared to like a year ago? Oh, Yes. It was literally like, you know, they uh, want to say inflation. It was like one, two, three percent. It was literally in some instances, 75 percent increase. How you can just play this off. And, and you know, it's not even necessarily that like it's shrinkflation. It, it's mm -hmm. it's what used to be a 60 ounce bottle of of, you know, orange juice or whatever it is, yep. is now a 54 ounce. Yep. 100%. You've just shrunk it, you know? So yeah. maybe yeah. the prices stayed the same, but now I'm getting six, seven, eight percent less than what yeah. I used get less to for get. Your money. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you saw. So, I mean, you, you mentioned orange juice, right? Orange juice prices are rising so fast that they just hit their limit up threshold and were halted. There's a limit to what prices can increase from manufacturers. Since the low of 2020, the price of orange juice is up 315%. <laughs> this year alone, in 2023 alone, and keep in mind, we're only 10 months into the year, orange juice prices have jumped by 105%. Yeah, imagine that. Just this year. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't even know that's something that I personally noticed because I don't. I couldn't even tell you the last time I bought orange juice. Yeah, but that's insane because like there's something that like a lot of people probably buy. I'm that's you, right. Orange has been around for quite a long time. It's a staple of breakfast. I just happen to not enjoy it. But to think that like that's something that's really just gone past us because it's not yeah. something we drink. But there are plenty of people out there that do. Like, that's crazy. Can you imagine that going up that much? I, I've I've read some stuff on that. And, and you know, I, I've heard about some, and I, you know, I guess in Florida, like the oranges, you know, the green oranges or something. Like, there's something with the, you know, with the crops, you know, this yeah. year. There's always a but, reason. But there's always a reason. There's always <laughs> I mean, here, reason. here's another one then. Olive oil prices are up 130% since last year. Olive yeah. oil. Yeah. I, that was one of the things the guy was on there with Costco. Like, it was a big thing of olive oil. It was, yeah. it was literally up like 75%. It's insane. Man. And here's live the thing too. cattle, like live cattle for beef, up 125% no, that... since 2020. <laughs> that I definitely know because every time I go <laughs> to the steak aisle, I'm like, jeez, man. <laughs> Yeah, I'm waiting for these things to, you know, have one day left before they have to be right. made to hopefully get it back to the price it was when it was, you know, yeah. fresh and I had two weeks to decide to cook it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's and, and here's the thing, too. And, and, you know, I think we've talked about this before is like it's not like these prices are going to all of a sudden go back down. Right. No. Grocery stores in these places are having gotten used to making this money based on these prices they're not all of a sudden going to say to their you know to you know to their stockholders like we're going to we're going to cut americans a break we're going to go back yeah, to free prices like it, that doesn't happen you're going to no. be stuck paying these and it's just going to feel 
less uh, you, you're just going to get used to it and it's just one of those things that it, it really is what it's about is like uh, just get used to these prices we'll lower sure. them down a little bit we'll raise them up crazy high and then we'll bring them back down and you'll think oh well i'm only paying you know nine dollars a pound you know for you know for store made brisket you know not even the good stuff you know i'm, I'm you know well all right well Nine dollars, yeah. thirteen dollars a pound. That's not too bad, you know, because now you you know it's twenty bucks a pound or whatever, you know. It's, when you get back down, I was like, no, that's not really what these prices used to be. They used to be three ninety nine, four ninety nine a pound. That's right. <laughs> but you forget no. about it. It's called price conditioning. Yeah, you know, you just keep driving that that those prices into people's heads, and then all of a sudden, it seems like you're giving them a good deal, and it's it's yep. just it's it's incredible. I mean, it's absolutely yeah. unbelievable what's happening. And when you look across the board, there are so many things. As you mentioned earlier about you know like uh, the Biden administration wanting to put out about how things are going well and people are so much better off. So it's really interesting. They just came out with a new graph. This uh, I'd have to look up through, but it's it's the uh, it's all through like the government. I'm just trying to find the exact uh, administration. But 447,000 Americans are now working two full time jobs, and so the number of Americans working two full time jobs is now 33 percent higher than it was in 2008. So. A third more people working two full-time jobs. So what happens is the government then comes out and touts their job report about like, oh, look at all these new jobs we've created. But you've created those jobs by making people have to work two jobs. And imagine when you think about the fact that you look at that number, I mean, half a million people are working two full-time jobs. There's always some number of people that are doing it. But if you go back and like, Oh, I don't know. To, uh, what uh, this date here would probably be like? Looks like about 2010. Uh, Two hundred thousand people, and then you know it starts moving up. So between just 2010 and now, that number is up what two and a half times. It's insane. Yeah. And so then, and you're looking at that and saying that that's a good thing. Like, oh, look at all the new jobs we've created. No, there's no money. People are working so much more. And and it's not just that, just so you know, part-time employment has jumped uh, by nearly 1.2 million since June, just since June. So if you have 1.2 million part-time jobs, what does that mean? Well, that means some people have lost their jobs and they're having to take on full-time jobs, but a lot of people still have their full-time jobs and they're also working a part-time job. Yeah, And so those aren't positive job report signs. Those are negative job report signs. But, but, but the way they spin it, it's, it, yeah. you know, it's, it, it's so dishonest. It's evil. I mean, it really, it is like to yeah. say, look how much better we are. And I'm like, yeah. come on, man. I'm like, yeah, nobody, yeah. And like anyone buying this and saying, yeah, well, no, no, my life is definitely better now than it was five years ago. Yeah. To say that, like you really, you have to be lying unless you were the one of the people that won the, you know, the billion dollar jackpot or something. <laughs> like everything has gone through the roof. Everything has gone up, and to spin it any other way is just, you know, I'd rather him come out and be like, yeah, we've had a tough couple of years. And I understand, yeah, the jobs have come up, you know, the job reports show that, that, you know, we're increasing it and, and that's good, but here's too many people are working a part-time job and a full-time job, yeah. two full-time like, jobs. We know what it means. Yeah. We want to do better than this, you know, kind of just come out and be honest for once. Right? But again, you just don't care. Like, obviously you just don't care because yeah. to put those out is just so I, it's laughable. And, and, you know, you just look through the comments on there and you'd be like, come on, man. Like, you know, people, nobody's buying it anymore. No. Like, stop trying. Like, yeah. come out and say, here's what we're going to do to make it better because we know these jobs are inflated because of X, Y, and Z. And we don't want that. Here's what we're right. going to do. You know, we, we joke, um, um, you know, uh, all these people want. 15, 20 bucks an hour to work fast food. Did you see, um, did you see, uh, Chipotle making, um, 
uh, they're coming up with uh, an automated like oh bowl yeah to make the, yeah. the yeah it's a system that automatically makes your so you know right. your your barber coable <laughs> <It's just laughs> that's like, the future so now we're automating so much more things you know you you don't need as many salespeople now you know it's just yeah. we're heading for some really rough times like just weird times and i i don't i don't know what the answer is on any of the stuff you know you have all this automation you have all the stuff that that's you know and and a lot of it is businesses trying to survive, you know, it's, you know, sure. it, it's, you know, people demand more pay, demand higher wages. And it's like, okay, well, we're going to give it to you, but we're going to cut also cut workforce by 20%. So we right. can give you this and now we're going to do it. You know, like yeah. my local grocery store, like I, I live in, I, I would consider a very, well, you know, my area, very, yeah. Upscale, very bland, right? you know, well. middle, middle class <laughs> right. area, you know, like it's, crime isn't really a thing. I mean, you have some petty stuff, you know, and then of course yeah. there's some drug deals that go down in any city, you know, and you know, there's a murder. If there's a murder, it's like, it, you know, everyone's locking their doors. Right. Right. My grocery store that I go into now, if I do self checkout, it can sense if I take a bag of instant potatoes out and it will not scan any further and there was this huge sign that they had put up as you walk in and be like, you know, we, you know, we recognize hard times and this and that, you know, we're, we're taking steps to ensure, you know, essentially that like people don't steal. So your prices yeah. don't go up. And it's, it's the most frustrating thing in the world because there's two checkout people. Right. And those lines are, are back through the vegetable aisle you know, yeah. you're waiting. So it's like, I, I, I got to sit now. I'm going to self check out, but now I'm self checking out. Now the system wants to make sure everything is weighed absolutely perfectly correct. And it won't let me go forward. If I move a bag to try and put other food in, it is the most frustrating thing. And I'm just like, how, <laughs> like, like it, it's definitely, you know, a, a first class problem. It's not really like a, you know, it, it, <laughs> sure. it is a major inconvenience, to, you know, a, you know, minor inconvenience, I guess, but you know, it, it's like, this is just a sign of things to come. You know, this yeah. is, you know, everything is locked up. You know, you mm -hmm. want to get formula, you have to now go ask them to unlock the key. How, <laughs> how you go into these, like, you go into Walmart and, you know, razors are, are locked up. You go into Home Depot. I, I needed to get some wire to do some electric, electrical work. I had to ask someone to open up wow. and, and let me get. 20 feet of of electrical wiring because people were stealing it to take the copper out how is anyone saying we are better off than what we've yeah. been it, it, yeah it is don't insane. worry it's still better we're better and i'm and i'm in a i'm in a very fine town a, a town that like this yeah. isn't a major issue like what are we doing in these inner cities where what is happening yeah. in these other places if this is what i'm dealing with in a town where uh, a, a murder happens once every three years what is happening in these places like chicago and 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 new york and all these places yeah. where it's just impossible to to even you know just go to the grocery store and buy something like what yeah. how are we saying we're better off how 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 like it's not stop fooling yourself stop voting party lines start voting for real change they are supposed to be working for us make them work for us we don't want yeah. government run grocery stores in in our inner cities i promise you that yes we need to get food there and we need to make sure they have fresh vegetables we need to make sure they have all that stuff someone needs to be teaching these people how to run these things and we need to do something to curb yeah. all of the violence all of the looting all the thefts that are going on figure it out we don't need government run things we don't need to be scanning you know our wrists as we go into a store you know or having our you know our eyes uh you know <laughs> doing a an ocular uh pat down as we walk into a store yeah. we need things to be <laughs> you know Make America great again, you know. Hey, I, 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 you know, I, maybe I don't like the man, but I do like the slogan. You know, I, I, I want to go back to the '90s where I can ride my bike to the grocery store, set my bike outside, go in the grocery store, buy whatever I want with cash, come back out, my bike is still there, and I can ride back home and, and enjoy it. 
Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to see those days anytime soon. And I think, you know, it's interesting because and this is going to be a, a topic we don't have time to get into tonight because we're already a little long, but who wins? Now, we're talking about who's losing, right? We're losing. Regular people are losing. But I'll tell you, someone who's going to win from all of this, and I've never heard this talked about anywhere else, but places like Amazon are going to be big winners. Places where you, you, everyone it's just going to force people to do more ordering online, more household delivery, because when it's such a pain to go to the grocery store, when it's such a pain to go to these different places, screw it, I'll just order online and I don't have to mess with all of this stuff. And so you better believe, you know, five, seven years ago, whatever it was, when Amazon announced that they were getting into the grocery game, people thought they were nuts. Why would you ever want to deliver groceries, right? And yeah, they bought Whole Foods, but then they started working out grocery delivery through Amazon Prime. And people thought, I can't work. It's just not going to make sense. It's not going to make any sense. And now, slowly but surely, it's going to be less hassle to just order and have the stuff delivered than it would be to actually go out and have to do it. Particularly, by the way, if you're working two full-time jobs. It's very difficult to go out and do your grocery shopping yeah. when you're working two full-time jobs. You can't yeah. afford the groceries anyway. And so the big players are going to continue to win. And the small mom and pop places are going to continue to be driven out of business. Because they're going to be the ones that have to take, you know, we talked not long ago about, you know, restaurants, right? And, and theft and all of the different things that come with that. And then it's kind of like, well, what do they have to do? Well, if they don't go out of business, they raise their prices. But when they raise their prices, then what? And when they buy their, their food and their food's more expensive, then they have to raise their prices. But then people stop going there because now it's an expensive restaurant, but it was never supposed to be. And so you just drive all those things out of business and guess how you can stay in business. I bet you could go to the government and get a small business administration loan or something like that to where now you are back and indebted to the government. And so that's, look, let's face it. I don't care what party you're in. The party is irrelevant because the party, it's like, if you look at the side of a, of, of a machine, right? There's not a gear that just spins. That gear fits into another gear. Those two gears as they spin, that's what actually creates the progress. The Republican gear and the Democratic gear, they fit together and they power the machine that is the overall government. So the idea that you're saying like, oh, well, I'm not, I'm not a Democrat. I'm a Republican. I'm not a Republican. I'm a Democrat. Bro, you are so short-sighted. You don't actually see what's happening. You are the same. And you're arguing about the things that are, do they matter in the grand scheme of things? Sure, they matter. But do they matter in terms of like just being able to survive on a day to day basis? No, they don't matter. Right. They don't nope. matter that much. Not at all. No. And it goes back to something I said earlier follow the money. It's That's it. Follow the That's money. That's it. And just for clarification, since you do bring that up, I mentioned earlier North Grumman, and I said I couldn't remember. I didn't think that was right. It's Lockheed Martin. Lockheed Martin went up 7% the day of the attack on Israel. And when Russia invaded Ukraine, the stock jumped approximately 30% in three days. Since the start of 2022, Lockheed Martin is up approximately 25% as a stock. Because everything is, all of the tension globally is uh, is creating this. And so defense contractor stocks across the board are all going up right now. Hmm. Weird. Yeah. Weird Good time works. to be in the uh, defense sector, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Not that there's ever a bad time to be. Sure. But, but a yeah, good time never, to be. Yeah. There's, <laughs> there's definitely better times. Uh, yeah. There's good times and greater times yeah, right. to be in the defense sector for sure. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so we, we've we've talked a whole lot and solved absolutely nothing, which is really kind of what we're known for. Oh, sure. Um, That's uh, yeah. the name of the show, right? <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, uh, anything else you want to touch on before we wrap it up? No, man. Um, 
stay diligent, stay alert out there, pay attention, yeah. keep your eyes open. I mean, I don't know what else you can do. No, that's it. And just bear in mind that, uh, at the end of the day, we still have the power to change things if we choose to, but you can't do it from your couch. You can order groceries from your couch, but you can't change who's in charge from your couch and you can't change, you know, and again, this isn't just about voting for the record before it ever gets to voting. It's about just paying attention to educating yourself, right? Yep. Not getting distracted. Forget about voting for a minute and just know what's happening in the world. Pay attention. Don't fall for the tricks and the distractions and, you know, all of these types of things, because the more you do that, the more you're irrelevant. And, and that's what enables them to just do what they want to do. Trust me, if they really were concerned about what you thought, uh, yeah, orange juice wouldn't be up 300%, right? Like those things wouldn't happen. Beef wouldn't be up 125%. Olive oil wouldn't be up 130%. They can do it because they know you don't, you don't either, you don't notice it. Or you do notice it and you're just like, oh, man, that sucks. I guess it is what it is. And then you just buy it and you're done. Yep. You don't pay any attention to why or who's responsible or what you can do to change it or anything else. Yeah. And that's the problem. You know, the problem Start is asking we, questions. We, yeah. Yes. Just ask why? the question at least, at least ask the question. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. That's uh, enough of a rant, I guess, for uh, for tonight. Longer than yeah. we wanted to go, but uh, there's too much happening in the world right now. I will just close it uh, by saying that you know, uh, I guess you know, I hate to I hate to use such a cliche, horrible uh, phrase as thoughts and prayers. Uh, but either, if not both, then either thoughts or prayers, regardless of uh, what your beliefs are. Uh, should be going out to people in the Middle East uh, right now. Uh, yeah. And and honestly, not just Israel, Israel and Palestine, um, because there are a lot of people. Now, why you'd still be there at this point uh, in Palestine, I guess, is another question. If you didn't get the picture by now, you really should. You should be gone. But but regardless, there's a lot of good people that are there that, that are not part of this. You know, it's easy to look at this as just a one sided thing like people continue to do in world things and think there's a good guy and a bad guy and a yeah. winner and a loser. And it doesn't work that way. Nope. And there's a lot of good people and innocent people that are there that are, that are uh, suffering because of, you know, the decisions being made by a small group of people. And guess what? We're not even sure who that small group of people are. We're not saying that's Hamas. We're not saying that's Israel. We're not saying that's the U S we're not saying it's Saudi Arabia, but those are all the usual suspects, aren't they? So, you know, pay a little bit of attention, but definitely, Definitely thoughts with, uh, you know, with folks there in the Middle East who are going through a, a pretty hellish time right now. Absolutely. So with that, we will uh, go ahead and shut the sucker down and hopefully we'll have better news next week. In the meantime, be safe, everybody. Thank you. Good night.